All right, let's get in and do our first animation. So I'm going to start off with the bouncing ball. Um, a lot of the time when people want to learn animation, they, they want to get in and do something really complicated straight away. When actually you can save yourself a lot of time and hassle by starting with the basics like timing and spacing. Squash and stretch controllers are at zero. So there's no squash and there's no stretch. So while we have them like that, we might as well set keyframes at the points in the animation where we don't want there to be squash and stretch. Initially, this is hopefully demonstrated to you the principle of overlapping motion and how you have to think about inertia because everything you're animating will have mass. Okay, so let's animate this walk. So I shot some uh, reference footage. Excuse my hairdo, but anyway, I was having a bad hair day that day. Drag that um, one frame earlier. Compensate a little bit. And now I can copy and paste. There we go. So oh, let's yeah. just select all these channels and add the cyclic modifier and see what happens. Um, here is the reference I shot. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, Buster Keaton or Charles Chaplin or Rowan Atkinson or any great body actor but the reason I shoot this footage is to give me ideas that I wouldn't normally get there's all these little things going on in terms of timing and posing that you can't really think up off the top of your head or it's very hard to and now you can see the ball is detaching from the arm at that point in this discuss how I make poses and a good workflow for making poses and and what to think about when you're doing our final pass of animation I think I think having the the facial animation has really helped putting in blinks and brows and also those those tweaks to the hands and the general body mechanics it's now in much better shape 